Hello everyone and welcome to Hill Street. Today there will be two short stories. The first will be The Little Flower and the second will be I ran from the cops and got away. Now, I wish they would have caught me. If you end up enjoying these stories, please leave a like. And if you enjoy hearing stories from me, please subscribe and become a resident of Hill Street and let me know how I'm doing in the comments. Now, let's get to these nightmares. I asked my love to take a walk, to take a walk, just a little walk, down beside where the water flows, down by the banks of the Ohio. He sang it so softly and the melody barely seemed to leave his lips. His voice was beautiful, hauntingly so. He held her hand as they lay next to the stream, and he sang for her. And only you say that you'll be mine, in no other arms entwine. So soft his voice was, almost as though he was whispering. Well, he needed anyone else hear him sing. The song was after all her, for her. So he didn't need to bell out the tune. He turned and looked at her. He was overcome with the rush of warmth people called love. With his free hand, he gently brushed a strand of hair from her face. She had a faint smile on her. It was almost a neutral look, and yet he continued to sing. Down beside where the water flows, down by the banks of the Ohio, he got up leaving her to lie and listen to the melodic rush of the stream, the bright hot sun gleaming down on God's good earth, the green grass beneath their picnic blanket rustling gently in the breeze. It was scenic, so much so it seemed straight out of a movie. He was walking further from her, looking, searching, he bent down and found what he was looking for. A simple, delicate daisy. Just one. He had no need for a bunch. He walked with it gently. He had always been a gentle person. It reflected in his singing with the way it was so quiet. If you asked anyone about him, they tell you he never heard a fly. They say love is like a flower. You must nurture it and let it grow. She was his flower, his love, his delicate little daisy. They also say you should not pick the flower and put it in a vase for display, as it will soon wither and die. Rather, let the flower be and let it be beautiful in the wilderness. That is what he intended for her. He would never pluck her and let the world see her beauty. She was his flower, and he wanted to grow and nurture her. He arrived back at the stream. A bird far off in the distance let out a shriek. Something must have frightened it. He hadn't wandered far from the stream, and once back next to her, he lay down, daisy in hand, head on the grass, breathing in her scent deeply as he lay next to her, just as the flower in his hand had a beautiful smell, so did she. He placed the flower in her hair, further beautifying her. A flower for his flower. He looked towards the bright sun and squinted. Such a lovely day. The stream continued to flow steadily, he gazed at her with nothing but love. Unfortunately, the love he had for her was unrequited. Well, it didn't matter. He loved her enough for the both of them. He threw the knife into the river as he got up and walked away, leaving her there in her beauty, flower and hair, young and beautiful, pale skin due to the loss of blood flow but still beautiful. He sang the last bit of the song as he walked away. I held a knife against her breast, 
as into my arms she pressed. She cried, good God, don't you murder me. I'm not prepared for an eternity. I wandered home between twelve and one. I cried, my God, what have I done? I killed the only girl I love, for she would not want to be my bride, and only say that you'll be mine, and no other arms entwine. Down beside where the water flow, down by the banks of the Ohio. If he couldn't have her in life, he'll have her in death. It was a secluded bit of the river. He could come visit her anytime he'd like. He'd never have to fear losing her to anyone. She was his forever. I don't know where else to turn here. I'm desperate. Please, if you can read this, you need to do whatever you can to help me. I don't know what the heck is going on, but I need to communicate with somebody who might have a better clue than I do. Let me tell you what happened. I was driving down the highway, speeding a little too fast, but in my defense, there wasn't really anyone else on the road at the time. A man's entitled to some fun every once in a while, isn't he? Anyways, as soon as I started gaining some momentum, a cop flashed his lights behind me and starts the siren. I had some contraband in my car at the time, and I didn't feel like getting locked up, so I sped up. I managed to twist down some back roads and nearly got hit head on when a car swerved in front of me but I dodged it at the last second and made it out without a scratch. However, once I lost the feds, that's when the weird crap started to happen. For one thing, I noticed that it was really hot all of a sudden. It is in the middle of winter, but it feels like short sleeve weather, you know? I rolled up my sleeves and turned up the AC in my car, but it still didn't help. Before I drove home, I took care to throw the contraband away far from where I stayed, in a ditch on some little rinky-dinky side road nobody drove on. I didn't want to have to get rid of it, but the pressure was on, and I knew it would be better for me in the long run. Once I got home, I cooked one of those frozen TV dinners and went to bed. Then the nightmare started. In the dream, I was being chased by a woman with long blonde hair. Now of course you'd think this would be somebody's wet dream, but this was far from erotic. She was all scarred up and wrong. Her mouth hung loosely open as she ran. Her teeth shattered and splintered into shards of red and white. Her whole body was covered in deep lacerations and the white dress she was wearing was completely stained with dirt and blood. She caught up to me in the dream, and before she could do whatever she was planning on doing, I woke up. It was the middle of the night, and I was still burning hot. I didn't understand. My AC was cranked to the max, my fan was running, and it was 2 a.m. Why does it feel like it's 100 degrees? I went to check to see if I had a fever, but I didn't. I turned on the TV and switched it over to the 24-7 news channel. They were reporting that the body of a young blonde-haired woman was found dumped on the side of the road. They pulled up a picture of the so-called Jane Doe, and my blood went cold. That's the girl. That's the girl who was in my dream, but that doesn't make sense. It can't be. How in the world could they have? The sweat continued to roll down my face, and I threw up all over my couch in worry. Something is not right with me. I feel like I'm burning. This is no ordinary sickness or disease. I had to go to a doctor. The doctor was of absolutely no help. He had no real advice for me except to keep hydrated and stay cool. Thanks a lot, asshole. I feel like I'm on fire and you think some water will help me? 
I've been running up my credit card buying packs and packs of bottled water. I go through at least eight bottles a day. I ended up with a new symptom. I began having auditory and visual hallucinations of that girl. But that doesn't make sense. She's dead. Ghosts aren't real. I see her out of the corner of my eye. She's angry at me. She wants to hurt me, but she can't. She comes near and tries, but there's something stopping her from ending my life. Not that that makes it any better. It's still disturbing as hell. I went down to the police station the other day and tried to turn myself in. They asked me why. I told them that I was a guy who was running from the police that got away, gave them my plate number and make and model of my car. They said that they had absolutely no investigation under my name and that I had no outstanding warrants. I don't know what to do. Everything burns. The water I drink, I don't know how, but it makes my mouth drier. It's like it hurts to drink it. But I need something, anything to cool me down. I can't take showers anymore. There's no cold water. It's all hot. I feel like my skin will boil off, but I look in the mirror and I'm fine. My bed is soaked in puddles of sweat. I can barely sleep. And when I do, I see that damn girl there. Please, if somebody knows what's going on, help me. Hello, my name is David Tashaw with WQRC 11. In our top story tonight, a local Martin County man is dead after a police chase ended in a fatal accident. But what happened when investigators searched his car was even more shocking. The body of 22-year-old Sarah Everett was found savagely mutilated and beaten to death in the trunk of his vehicle. Officers say that the man's property is being searched for more victims. The chief of police issued a statement today, stating that he believes the man resisted arrest because he feared that the young woman's remains would be found during an inspection.